We are parents who want to increase awareness and understanding of what dyslexia is and isn't. And we are parents who want to advocate for other families who have struggling readers. So where do we begin? Uh, we want to work with the Ames Community School District to meet the needs of um, students who struggle to read. And today we want you to commit to forming a literacy task force. We recommend that the task force meet monthly with key stakeholders, and these are the people that we're recommending. Um, Maggie Ross, who's our Associate Superintendent, Darcy Cousins from Special Education, Anthony Jones, from, who's the Director of Special, um, Student Services, our staff representatives, and this group of people would probably be coming and going from this group, but we include our toasters, coaches, teachers, somebody from technology, those sort of things. Um, parents, so that's our group, and then board members. And I know Alyssa and Jeanette, we haven't really asked you, but we think that you would be great. <laughs> because, only, and yeah. I know you were super busy, but... Um, I'm not going to be super busy in so five weeks. Right. No, I'm not. Right. <laughs> but you are the president of the board. Yeah. You also have history with TLC, and you've been, you know, you come and go through from a lot of the committees. So we think that you would have a, a be able to communicate with the other board members. And Jamet, you are on the TLC and you're part of the equity committee. And we think that being, we want to collaborate with that group as well. And I think that having those connections is really important. Um, and then we want to work with the Ames Community School District to create a systematic approach to improving literacy levels on um, for all students. And we wanted to use the Upper Arlington and Ohio School District um, plan. And we'll, Aaron's going to talk about that shortly. Um, and then we would like to help the Ames Community School District uh, to connect with professionals outside the district that you know know you know experts with dyslexia and you know struggling readers. Um, the task force would help the Ames Community School District be more transparent in regard to literacy plan and improve communication and relationships between the district and parents. Um, so why do we need a task force? Research supports. Uh, dyslexia is the most common neurovagrant behavioural disorder um, in children affecting 17 to 21% of school age children. And this is just an approximation, we don't have the data, but if you put that data into that calculation into our district, approximately 780 students um, uh, have been affected by dyslexia in this district. Um, research supports. Um, dyslexia is the most common learning disability, affecting 80% of all children who are identified with a learning disability. An achievement gap in reading is present and can be identified as early as first grade, and it persists through adolescence if it's not remediated. Children who have a poor start to reading rarely catch up on their own. They need the support. And we believe that students who struggle to read or who have dyslexia are poorly identified and remediated in our school district. Of the 35 students in our group, only three have IEPs and only 19 have um, 504 plans. So most of them are in general ed. Research supports that structured literacy that includes all five components of reading and is intended, explicit, <coughs> systematic, and multi-sensory improves all students' reading, writing, and spelling, but especially those that are struggling with readers or have dyslexia. Students in three to 12th grade um, who have poor reading skills or lack um, appropriate, in, sorry, students um, in three to 12 who have poor reading or Dyslexia lack appropriate intensive instruction related to reading, writing, and spelling in this school district. Um, and the Ames Community School District has foundations in K through 12. We believe that it should be implemented. To, sorry, to two. Sorry, and we should uh, believe be implemented in third grade to ensure that um, all students are proficient in uh, fourth grade. A lot of students hit that wall in third grade, so this is just to boost them onto. Uh, to fourth grade, and many students have resorted to paying large sums of money for tutoring, and you saw that in our previous slides, um, and te assistive technology, um, and, but there's equally as many or more parents out there that can't afford tutoring or assistive technology, so we really need to be supporting these parents and their students. Research also supports, um, tells us that it is important for schools and communities to develop opportunities for summer learning that are aligned with instruction that occurs during the regular school year. The Literacy Task Force should work to ensure our summer reading program aligns with school reading programs, but at a more intensive rate. And research supports that the lack of reading remediation in early grades leads to social emotional issues such as poor self-esteem, poor behavior, absenteeism, higher school drop, dropout rates, lower graduation rates, and poor lifestyle choices. So many of our children have suffered from anxiety issues, they've complained of stomach aches or um, other illnesses that have uh, led to chronic absenteeism. Many of our children have attention deficit disorder as well as dyslexia, and if dyslexia isn't addressed, then you'll find that the, um, 
their attention deficit is exacerbated, leading to increased behavioral issues. So research also tells us that a lack of remediation will lead to incarceration, a burden on society, lower paying jobs, and unemployment for these struggling readers as they grow up. The Ames Community School District vision and mission state that, that the school district will meet the needs of all students to ensure they are lifelong learners who are citizenship, college, and career ready, and they will ensure that all learners develop the knowledge, skills, attitudes, values, and personal esteem necessary to grow in and shape a changing society. So based on these two things alone, this research and our vision and mission statements, um, addressing the needs of struggling readers really should be a priority. And then according to the National Center of Education Statistics, all proficient readers, um, of all proficient readers, only 4% fail to graduate, compared to 16% of those not re reading well at third grade. Black and, black and Hispanic children who are not reading proficiently in third grade are twice as likely as similar white children not to graduate from high school. And in the, uh, 2013, data from the Department of Education indicated that students with disabilities only graduated from high school at a rate of 62% compared to the national average, which was 81%. And then students in, um, who are on IEPs, black or Hispanic, in the Ames School District actually graduate at a lower rate than their peers. Um, and that's from our report card. So then bringing that all into place, um, this is a graphic that looks at disability representation across public schools, and this is across the United States. Um, this data is from 2013 and 14. And you can see um, specific learning disabilities is the largest grade um, spot there, and our numbers aren't showing up here very well, but that covers about 35% of all students with disabilities. Uh, the next group after that is speech and language impairment other health impairments, and then you can see autism is at 8.3%. Back in our previous slide, we did talk about how um, specific learning disabilities, that includes um, your dyslexia, dyscalculia, dysgraphia, 80% of students with specific learning disabilities actually have dyslexia. So when you look at that part, 28% of the whole are students with dyslexia who have disabilities in our school, um, public school system. So then looking at that, we move on to graduation rates in Iowa. Uh, these are broken down into subgroups, and you can see, and this doesn't come up like it did on my other slides, but anyway, it's different with the Apple, but you can see the second from the bottom is students with disabilities, and they graduate um, at 73% rate compared to the overall um, average in Iowa in 2014 at 90%. So they were the lowest graduating group. And then you break that down further to the Ames School District in 2014, and you can see at the top there, disability, students with disabilities graduated at a 78% rate compared to their peers, which was around 95%. So this is something that we need to be looking at. Um, these students are kind of being missed in our <coughs> overall um, uh, pro you know, progress, so uh, we would like to address this issue, um, and we have ways of doing that. So, uh, <laughs> so we know that, that the school district has done some things to take some positive steps forward in supporting these kids. So these are the things that we're aware of that, that you've implemented already. Um, basic dyslexia professional development. <clears throat> sending staff to the Decoding Dyslexia Iowa conferences each year. Formation of the word study team. Purchase of foundations in K2. Purchase of Wilson reading system in the special ed. One-to-one -one technology for all students and the summer reading program. All of those are very positive steps forward to support these kids. So then Aaron's just gonna go on from here, looking beyond the Ames Community School District and Upper Arlington, Ohio. So we, we picked Upper Arlington, Ohio because it's a pretty good example of a district that um, was basically asked to do something about their struggling readers. Um, it's a suburb of Columbus, Ohio. It's uh, got a population of roughly 35,000. It's got five elementaries, two middle schools, and one high school. Um, basically what happened is 19 families got together and they tried working with the district and uh, they ended up fortunately having to file a claim and they won. Um, they uh, worked with the district from there on out to kind of implement a screening process and a process to address the struggling readers in their district. Um, and kind of the slides following this, we're going to go over the, the screening process they used kind of the process they used once they identified the students, as well as some of the results from Upper Arlington and uh, another uh, huge school districts in Ohio that did something similar. So right here is CTOP. Um, CTOP is what they use to screen all the students. Um, it was developed by three psychologists. Um, 
I specialized in uh, literacy research, uh, Richard Wagner, Joseph Torgensen, and Carolyn Rochat. And uh, it was developed based on about uh, 1,600 people that uh, kind of covered about 30 states and four zones within the United States originally. And that was back in 1999 when they released it for research. Um, since then, it's been revised a little bit just to establish new norms. It lowered the floor from five to four. Um, basically, the test covers four through seven and seven through 24 the ages, so it's able to identify as early as four all the way up to 24. This is a little bit more in-depth information about CTOP. So CTOP was um, developed in mind to kind of help identify readers that would benefit from more intensive reading instruction. And it does this by identifying their level of um, achievement in three separate areas. One being phonological awareness, which is kind of a broad skill set that uh, identifying and manipulating words, like for example, saying uh, cowbell without bell. Um, is, a, is a good example of a question that would be on the test. Uh, phonological memory, which has to do a lot with your work near your short-term memory. Um, rapid naming, which is the capacity to retrieve uh, stored long-term memories such as letters, numbers, colors, or objects. And identifying with these three factors has shown that you can re reliably predict reading ability. Um, research also shows that identifying struggling readers early on and providing them with the appropriate intervention will improve reading outcomes overall. Uh, this is the kind of the process that Upper Arlington used. Um, basically all kindergarten and first graders are screened using CTOP. And they also select certain teachers to be trained in Orn Gillingham. Um, they group each uh, student, the students into three different groups. Um, uh, triple deficits, double deficits, and phonological awareness related group, and that all goes back to the um, phonological awareness, phonological memory, and rapid naming to where they get grouped into those groups. And from then on out, each, uh, each group is closely monitored for every six to eight weeks to see their progress and whether they need to address any more. So right here is kind of a, a flow chart of their process. Um, so in kindergarten, everyone gets CTOP and uh, they're grouped into triple, triple deficits, double deficits, and phonological awareness groups. And triple deficits being that you're deficient in all three areas. At a minimum, um, they first identify whether you need to be on an IEP or if you're on an IEP at one point you're transitioned off. Um, you're given Lexia, which is computer-based uh, program, as well as foundations and additional small group work. Um, double deficits get a less than that, they get uh, Lexia, small group work and foundations, and phonological awareness between 85 and 89 get just the core instruction of foundations, while if your phonological awareness falls below 85, you get foundations and Lexia. And the first grade process is pretty similar to uh, kindergarten. Uh, however, at this point, if you have a double or triple deficit, they uh, want to take a little closer eye on that, and they want to consider a student that has double or triple deficits for evaluation, possibly. Um, new first graders with double or, tri double or triple deficits uh, get foundations and Lexia in order to get that kind of base there to see if that will help them. Um, phonological awareness below 90 gets foundations, Lexia, and additional supports, which usually consist of uh, small group work and um, phonological awareness of 85 and then another uh, C top factor such as um, rapid naming or phonological memory being low uh, gets sent to, uh, kind of to the reading uh, specialists that are trained in Morgan Gillingham. Now I do have a question. Yep. <laughs> um, the foundations, are, is that something that's supplemental to what's reading in the classroom? Or do all the classrooms have they, one down? They all they are, yeah. they yeah. get a double dose of it. So they get in class in and class. then they get a second dose. Um, this is this is a slide kind of uh, so along with Upper Arlington, um, Ohio, the state of Ohio also identified four districts for a pilot program, which um, was to address dyslexia um, in the classroom in four four school districts. They were all based around the state of Cincinnati. Um, it consisted of a three years pilot program with one year follow up, um, and they provided the teachers with professional de development, which included uh, multi sensory uh, Orton Gillingham uh, based reading, and then uh, Dibbles, which is uh, the 
test they use to identify struggling readers. But uh, as you can see, they kind of use a similar approach to where they used a kind of a 